Hey internet, what's up? This is Unrested here, coming back to you after a long sabbatical, hiatus, moratorium on answering questions here on JFAC. A little bit of a switch up as we get into the year 2014 here. I'm going to go ahead and start answering questions not just based around Japan, but pretty much anything in general. That doesn't mean I am an expert of everything. For the most part, I probably am going to have very stupid answers or uh, answers that have no kind of reference other than my own experiences in life. Whether or not you wish to listen to those is completely up to you. Sometimes my advice will be good, and sometimes it will be preposterous. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Ed starts us off with our first question. He says, oh no wait, I'm sorry. We got view previous comments. I hate how it does that. No view previous comments. Hold on, gotta keep going back. I hate how they do that. Patrick starts us off. Sorry, Ed, you'll get there eventually. Why is green blue in Japan? Why do they call green lights blue, as in traffic signals? That's actually a real question. He's not joking around. Um, you know, this is something that people do tend to say in Japan, as far as Japanese people are concerned, if you see a green light, because we have normal traffic signals like you would have in the States. Ours tend to actually look kind of like aqua green, or like people might even say blue green. And if you really do look at it, and as far as I know, I'm not colorblind. Um, in fact, I'm probably pretty decent at identifying colors due to the fact that I'm a full time artist. Um, they do have kind of a blue tint to them. So, I mean, if you're brought up in a place where all the lights tend to have a blue tint to the green, or there's a blue green mix, Really, I think you would be right in saying blue or green. Josh Raleigh says, I know that tattoos are not common at all in Japan for native citizens due to their association with the Yakuza and whatnot. But what about piercings and stretched ears? Here in the States, over the last five years or so, it seems like almost everyone is stretching their ears. So I'm curious to know if the trend is carrying on overseas and the younger generation. Um. You know, not nearly as common here in Japan. And one thing that I find very strange, and this is something I have not had explained to me as of yet, is that when people do stretch their ears in Japan, they tend to only do it in one ear, one side. So they may have a gigantic one in one ear and none at all in the other ear, or maybe just like a normal piercing in the other ear. Um, I think this has to do something with some sort of asymmetrical beauty that they may see in this, which there is some art in Japan that if you look at it, it is asymmetrical based, which it actually works out very well. Um, if you even look at like designs on kimonos a lot of time, because the kimono crosses over here when the belt is looped around, they have kind of an asymmetrical design to them at times. So it could have something to do with their natural history of asymmetrical art. Other than that, I'm completely theorizing. Sandro says, what's the most disturbing video you have ever seen? I'm talking about something related to real gore. Um, there is a video I saw a long time ago. I was maybe 20 back then when I saw it. And from what I've heard, it was fake, but when I saw it, it looked incredibly real. Uh, for those of you who are a bit squeamish, you may not want to listen to this video. A helicopter lands and friends are videotaping their friends in this helicopter because it's their first helicopter ride and the family's really excited that they just got to take their first helicopter ride and the mom and the kid get out of the helicopter and they're like yay we had a really good time yay and they run up to the camera they're like hi okay and then the dad comes out and he's like yeah hey it was really fun and he throws his hands up in the air like yeah like that and you hear a scream and like blood splatters on the camera and like his hands get chopped off apparently. But I, I don't know, it looks super real. I don't know if I could ever find that video again on the internet. Um, and uh, But I've been told that that was totally fake. It was totally made up. I really hope it was because like his family's screaming and his arms are cut off, like his hands are cut off and it's, it's, it was pretty distressing to watch. Chance says, I recently made a joke on Reddit about feminists and immediately had the feminist army marching upon me. So my question is, what is your opinion about feminists and how to deal with the batshit insane ones? Well, here's my personal view on any type of ism or is. I really don't have a problem with almost any type unless it's some kind of like racially or 
age-based hate group, which is completely wrong. Um, but for the most part, isms and is, unless they take away somebody's liberty or happiness, are okay as long as they are not in the extreme forms. I feel that the extreme form of anything, including male chauvinism as well, is completely uncalled for and ridiculous. Whereas I agree with the same aspect of extreme feminism. Um, you know, there needs to be balance in everything you do, even balance within balance, as the saying goes. Josh says, how did you get into the making of art in role-playing games? Um, for those of you who don't know, my full-time job is drawing illustrations for Setsume Show, which means game manuals. Um, by game manuals, though, I do mean manuals introduced into pen and paper gaming. Um, my introduction into that was really kind of uh, a series of networking that I never expected to happen. Uh, the very first gig I ever got was a very small magazine called Crawl Magazine. At the time, I was playing an RPG connected to that magazine in which they released adventures in the articles that they wrote. And um, I just so happened to ask if I could draw. Um, they were looking for artists. They put out a thing on their forum. They said, we're looking for artists right now. We can't really pay you anything, but if you're interested in drawing and having your stuff published, we need people to do maps, monsters, etc. So I said, hey, you know, I'm interested. I'd just like to get my art out there, exposure, you know, whatever. See some of my own art turn up in the games I play. That would be pretty astounding. And uh, I did the first two issues for free. Well, the first two issues I did were for free. They weren't the first two issues. They were like somewhere deep into the actual volumes of issues. And um, after that, uh, they were so happy with it, they asked me to come back a couple more times. Uh, other people connected to the, the magazine itself started to contact me and paid me very small sums of money to do artwork for them. Um, and it kind of just grew from there. Uh, those people networked with other people. As I started to get published, uh, you know, of course my name's going to be in the book as the illustrator. Uh, people started to see that and contacting me because I had my contact information. And a lot of this now is done completely through the web. I mean, even a lot of these books that I've done are PDF releases. They don't even get a print. Um, their barcode is only made for a PDF. So um, a lot of what I'm dealing with is third-party publishers via PDF. And uh, that's where I kind of got my start, is I just started to get more and more email contacts, Facebook contacts. Uh, I don't really use like LinkedIn or anything like that. Um, you know, it's up to you. I, I don't like deviant art either. That never got me any jobs or anything. Uh, mostly, actually, Google Plus, as bad as it is and as stupid as it is, Google Plus got me a lot of jobs. Um, I'm still going strong now. Ahmed says, what's the job market like for a non-native English speaker or a native French speaker in the Kansai region for teaching either of the languages? Uh, for, okay, so, <laughs> I guess by both languages you mean English and French? If you have any insight about it, I'm hearing rumors that Japanese kids are getting more insolent like Western kids. Got any thought about it? Um, right now in Kansai, I think the market's pretty decent to get a job here. Uh, I haven't really had any trouble finding any kind of work myself. I still do a little bit of teaching on the side for English. If you are a non-native English speaker, it is obviously a little bit harder due to the fact that a lot of jobs do look for speakers from uh, a country with English as their native tongue. Uh, French is still... Uh, used here quite a bit in schools as far as being taught as uh, one of the top languages here in Japan. I would say probably English, French, uh, German, uh, Chinese of course, and uh, what are some of the other top? Spanish! Actually Spanish surprisingly is, is pretty popular here. So I think maybe you could go that route at the same time. Do be ready to have a bit of a struggle due to the fact that you're a non-native English speaker. Sorry. Uh, as far as kids being insolent, like Western kids, yes, um, that is a very true fact. Um, I can personally say from my own experiences, I have been to quite a few schools where the kids barely let the teachers teach due to the fact of how rowdy they are and the fact that they have monster parents who won't ever reprimand their kids when they do stuff at school. All different types of problems. Okay, and Alex says, how are dental assistants treated in Japan? I'm currently getting my RDA here in California and was just wondering what job opportunities they have out there. What are the requirements to be a DA in Japan, so on and so forth. Well, Alex, as I've talked about in the past, anything related to any sort of medical career or career in which you need a license, which 
I'm sure, I don't know, in California, if you need a license, I would be almost 100% certain that you would, but here in Japan, you definitely do, and you need the Japanese license. Your California license would not let you practice in Japan, um, nor would I think it would let you practice in almost any country in the world. I think you'd probably have to have a license of that country. I think even sometimes within states, you have to have a specific license. Um, so, I mean, you know, you can come here and uh, you can try and be a dental assistant. Of course, you'd have to go through school again and get your license again and be able to do all of it in Japanese. If you feel like you're up to that, I guess it's worth your time. It doesn't really pay a ton. It pays about mm, sen gohaku in an hour, so it's about like $15 an hour. Uh, not horrible pay, but not the best either. All right, Ethan says, what is your goal size in millimeters when you stretch your ears? Um, I think right now I'm pretty satisfied. I don't really want to make my ears stretch out too much more. I think I'll stop here. If for some reason I do decide to go a little bit bigger, maybe I'd go for a full inch. I don't know. And he says, I like this untested. I think he means unrested, but that's okay. Uh, Emily says, how can I become a doctor in Korea? This is just a joke. Um, Yes, uh, Emily, if you want to become a doctor in Korea, go ahead over to Korea, go to immigration, say the secret password that lets you become a doctor, and you will indeed quickly become a doctor in Korea. No medical license needed, no schooling needed, no Korean speaking ability needed. Chucky says, hey Scott, any advice you can give for up and coming artists? Network, 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 um, network, yeah. That's all I can say, man. That's the only way we can make a living these days. Um, network and be fucking awesome at what you do. Never, ever stop. Even if you work another job, come home at night and do eight more hours of that artwork still, too. Ed says, do you know any small identity pockets near where you live? Example, Chinatown. Oh, okay, okay. For example, I was, I was confused for a second there until he gave me that example. Um, there, actually in Mie, there is a Spain-based... Um, it's called like Spain City, I think, or something like that, or I think they've got some kind of like Japanese, uh, what do you call it, conglomerate name, where they've like shrunk it down, like you've got convenience store, they just call it conveni. I think it's called like Spain Paul, which means like Spain Town or something like that. Um, and it's all a kind of like a theme park based around Spain. Um, I've never actually been to it. I've saw pictures, it looks pretty interesting. I'd like to check it out sometime. Isaac says, how can I become a lawyer? In Cyprus, I, I don't even know where Cyprus is. I mean, well, first of all, you become a lawyer by getting your uh, bar and um, you get licensed in whatever part of the world Cyprus is in because Cyprus could be a city, town, village, or country anywhere in the world. Or So you got to be a little more location specific. Johnny says, thoughts on Shinsei Bank, if you've used them. Uh, Shinsei is the green bank, if I'm correct. Uh, I know there's SMBC, but there's also, uh, Shinsei too. Um, I've never had any problems with any banks. Um, I have heard, and, and this is just through the grapevine, Mizuho, um, sometimes has problems dealing with foreigners, uh, that they'll open your account and then as soon as you leave, they'll close it. So, I don't know if that's true. I have no facts to base any of that up. Kyle says, Scott... How can I be as cool as you? It takes a lot of practice, a lot of wisdom, and a lot of experience in life. <laughs> and a lot of humbleness. A lot of humbleness. That should come first. Ethan says, what's your view on long-distance relationships? Um, you know, I think one of the things that's most important with a long-distance relationship is not just how far away are you, but how long have you been in the relationship. If you've invested years upon years in a relationship and you know how stable you both are and you really know each other's personality and disposition really well, I think they're very possible. Um, if it's something that's only started a couple months ago, probably not worth trying to keep up unless you're crazy, crazy committed. You've got a plan. That's the biggest thing too is you've got to have a plan. When are we going to see each other next? What's our schedule for seeing each other next? What can I look forward to as far as meeting you the next time? Etc. Etc. Rachel says, I'd like to open my own daycare center in Japan someday to help out with their massive shortage. How easy slash difficult would this be as a foreigner? Have there been successful daycares run by foreigners? Um, I think this is very possible actually. Um, now, when you say daycare, I'm guessing what you're meaning is like a hoikoen, which would be like a nursery school in Japanese. Um, 
And I think the things you would have to worry about here is making sure the people who worked for you, number one, were licensed. Um, but at the same time, if you were privatized, not everybody needs a license. And there's certain ways you can go around that. Um, at the same time, I would say open up the school with a basis of being an English-based international school with care being your primary concern. This would allow you to get the red tape out of the way that would be dealing with the fact that they'd say, well, you know, how much are you taking care of these kids? Like, what is your level of taking care of them? For example, are you bottle feeding? You know, um, what's your... Um, level of temperature you can have them come to school with because it's, this is something, you know, as a parent, I can totally understand a lot of these aspects because it's something you deal with every day as I was once a teacher and I drop my kid off with teachers every day too. Um, you need to tell them all your levels, get everything in order. For example, like I won't take a kid with um, 37 plus temperature. Um, I won't take a kid with influenza. They can't drop my kid off at this level of fever. Um, you know, if a kid needs to be bottle fed, then things need to be pre-mixed and put into a thermos or things need to be separated into powder and melt. I would have all your shit together before you even tried to bring this forward to the ward that you were trying to open it in. I would also very much so say try to open it in a very international melting pot area such as somewhere close to Tokyo or somewhere close to Osaka or Yokohama. Uh, where there is kind of a little bit of a mixed community. Um, if you try to open this in the countryside in Japan, you might find yourself running into too much red tape and a lot of concern from people. I'm not saying that they're necessarily xenophobic or untrusting, but it's just a very new idea to them to have a foreigner running such a hoikoen. Kyle says... Oh, I'm sorry, no. Wait. How can I... Yeah, it is Kyle again. How can I be as handsome as you? Well... Um, I kind of have dry good looks, and I uh, kind of put that up to the fact that I can't grow a beard. So I would say um, just rip all the hormones out of your body that let you grow a lot of facial hair. Now, if you're kind of a burly dude and the beard looks good on you, try to pump up on those hormones and grow out a big grizzly beard and get the whole mountain man thing going. As for me, I'm going to go with kind of like the, the metro look. I don't know. It seem, seems to work out all right for me. Jerry says, um, what are some Japanese artists to listen to? Oh, okay, uh, so as far as music we're talking, uh, let me suggest baby metal. Uh, recently I've been a big fan of baby metal. You can go look that up, it's spelled exactly the way it sounds. Baby, wah, wah, metal. <laughs> Barry says, where the hell you been, buddy? It's been a while and I missed your face. Barry, I missed your face too, even though you don't actually have your profile photo up here, you just got an anime picture. Okay, next we got Victor. You look like Wolverine in your picture here, Victor. Rachel, I am pretty sure Japan has a 9.5% birth rate, so there are less and less kids. Victor, you are right, our birth rate is going down, but there is still an overcrowding of kindergartens and nursery schools in Japan, and there's plenty of people who cannot get a place for them to stay. So Victor, maybe research that a little bit more um, and you'll see what I mean. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying you're wrong. You're actually right. Our birth rate is going down, um, but we are still way overcrowded and there's a huge waiting list and people who want to send their kids to government schools can't even get them in and moms can't work and make more money. And then the government wonders why no one wants to have kids. Uh, John says, oh, this is the last one, is it? Okay, John says, what is your take? on the declining birth rate in Japan. Wow, another one right after that. I've been studying in Japan for a while, and I'm writing my senior thesis on this problem. I'd like to know if you have any thoughts or solutions on the issue. Well, John, you've asked the right person. I have two kids. I've lived in Japan eight years now, and I'd say I've got a pretty good idea of why it doesn't work and why it's going down little by little. Uh, pretty much the government doesn't take care of its people well enough that they want to have kids. You're talking about a very conservative country here, money-wise. The average income, 60% is saved by a Japanese person. That's the average, and that's... I'm not just making a blanket statement, that is a true fact. You can go look it up, what does the average Japanese family save from their income? They save 60%. The reason they do this is because things in general in Japan are very, very expensive. For example, if you get a mortgage here on a house, look to that mortgage to be 30 plus years and sometimes span generations for people to pay them off. Um, on top of that, the government doesn't provide a lot of care. As we just talked about right now, um, 
there is an overcrowding of hoikoans and yochians, that's kindergartens and nursery schools, and um, the government really isn't doing anything to build more, to expand, to make it so that there's less of a weight. And the thing is, is if these parents can't put their kids in school, and I'm not saying just try to get rid of them as fast as possible, I'm talking like, you know, three and four year old kids, if they can't put them in a place in which they can be cared for in a cheap, reasonable government price, um, then the other parent can't work. They need to stay at home and be the babysitter or the parental figure, the caregiver. And um, so they're limited. They're limited with funds due to the fact that they can only get funds from one person within the family. They're limited in the fact that they cannot get away to a secondary job for the other family member and they're limited with the amount of income they can gather up. And on top of that, sometimes even if that person can get them into a kindergarten, kindergarten is so expensive here sometimes that them working literally cancels the other one out. Like they just hit it even. So I'm saying the kindergarten costs 700 a month, they make $700 a month. They cancel each other out, it's pointless. Something's got to be done that helps people out more. On top of it, the government announced a quote unquote, what would you say? Um, allowance given to people who have kids here. They have since reneged on certain aspects of that. They have not been given the money away to certain people or made cer certain special rules or put salary caps on who can receive this money or cut it off at a very young age. Um, yet still they keep asking people to have kids when they're not supporting them having these kids. Um, on top of that, there's even more problems. Um, like we've said, there's a decline in the education level here in Japan. Uh, kids in school are not getting as good of an education. The job opportunities are starting to go down. Um, there's a lot of problems. So some people might have the theory of why bring a kid into all that. Um, and once again, you're dealing again with a government. And this is due to the fact that we have a very large gray generation here in Japan, which I'm not saying we shouldn't take care of. We should take care of our elders. I respect them. I think we should. But Many, many times, the only people who have a say in politics are these old people because babies don't vote. And so they try to get everything squared away for themselves, but do very little for anyone having kids or for kids because they themselves are past the point of having kids. They themselves don't need kids and they themselves are not taking care of kids anymore. They're usually grown up and they've left the house. So all they're looking for is to take care of their needs, which you can understand to a certain aspect, but that balance should be provided via the government. That should be their job. They balance everything. But right now the government is run by very old people on top of it, so it's old people taking care of old people. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, there are certain aspects of Japan that are run really great. Um, you know, but I'd have to say right now the way that they're handling trying to get people to have more kids is just not at all. They're just not really doing much at all to help anybody, anyone, anywhere with any certain aspect. And any politician who tells you different is just a liar. And that's politicians in general, isn't it? Liars. All right. Uh, while I was doing this, a guy named Dustin wrote in and said, Nenkin, do you pay? Oh, Nenkin. Uh, so... Okay, I don't, I don't know which, is this, is this my taxes? <laughs> okay, so I know this is some sort of like loan or payment thing or tax thing. Um, I pay my taxes here in Japan. I've paid my taxes since day one. Um, I'm thinking Nenkin, because I can't see the kanji for it. If I saw the kanji for this one, I would actually know it better. This is either, um, um, what do you call it? health insurance, national health insurance, or um, retirement money, what do you call it? Your retirement money, your, fuck, why can't I remember that word? Your, you know, you've, you've finished working your whole life and they give you money. I can't think of that word. You guys can type it below and say, Scott, you're an idiot, simple word, here it is. Um, I actually do not pay for that. I do not. I pay national health insurance because you, you, you have to and health insurance here is really good. It covers a lot. It's super cheap. Um, but I do not pay for um, getting money after I retire. And that's a choice. That's a choice you can make. My wife does not pay it either. And I mean, she works quite a good job and uh, she makes quite a bit of money. And she also refuses to pay it because 
Number one, you don't really, you're not gonna get much of that money back because the people who are gonna be trying to earn that money to give it to you back when you become old are the generation of kids that will be working that were babies when we were working now. And guess what, as the population declines, there's not gonna be as many people working for the older mouths that they'll have to feed. So you need to take care of your own. Giving it to the government means you'll give them a lot more and receive a lot less. And anybody who doesn't understand that's kind of an idiot. So I personally don't think you should pay for it. Um, I am personally saving my own money to retire in an Asian country in which life in general is a lot cheaper. And I don't mean cheaper like they kill people every day. I mean cheaper like healthcare is even cheaper. Uh, getting a maid or a nurse or a household care person is very cheap for like Malaysia or Singapore where my money triples in value. Okay, I'm gonna retire there. I'm not gonna retire in Japan. Sorry, Japan, I love you to death. Not gonna go back to America because you're fucking too expensive with insurance. If I get old, I'm not gonna fucking spend all my money on keeping myself alive. Um, I'm gonna go to Singapore and Malaysia and buy 500 nurses for the same price that would get my finger fixed in America. Um, other than that, good questions, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, smorgasbord of questions that I answered today, mostly depending on the topic of Japan, which is fine. Uh, obviously, JFAC started as Japanese Frequently Asked Questions or Japan's Frequently Asked Questions. So that's where it should stand, is in that base, and I enjoy it and it gave me my start. And I enjoy answering some of your other questions outside of that realm as well. Very interesting and very fun. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that today. Till next time, I'm unrested. This was JFAC. I will see you next time. Bye!